Hello, and uh, welcome back to my tutorial. In parts 1 and 2, we talked about a few basic principles in GIS, or Geographic Information Systems, and how to create custom background maps in Tableau. In part 3 of this how-to guide, we will be looking at how to create Cora Pleth maps, how to create symbol maps, how to overlay the two layers, and what types of color schemes are best for what kinds of data. Also, we will look at how to combine symbol and Cora Pleth maps to display more than one variable at a time. Let's get started. I'm going to first open Tableau. I'm going to connect to my uh, data set. In this case, it's some world development indicator data I've downloaded from the World Bank. Uh, notice that Tableau immediately recognizes the geographical entities I'm working with. So when I drag uh, data into the sheet. It'll sh see uh, the country name and show it as a geographical variable. So I'm going to go here. As normal, I'm going to drag country name. It's going to give me a map of Africa. Let's, before we begin, let's change the background map a little bit. I like dark. It really makes the map uh, pop. Let's also change one of the map layers. I'm going to take out the names. So I'll go back. I'm going to change uh, to a map type. I'm going to choose my variable that I want. In this case, it's uh, for uh, cell phone subscriptions per 100 people, and drag it into color. And see, now I have a Coropleth map. I'm going to change the values here from sum to average. I'm going to drag years into filter so as to only show the last few years. Let's go 2015 to 2019. Okay, uh, there we go. Oh, hold on for a second. Showing three unknown values. Let's see what's going on here. Edit locations. I see that I have some aggregate data here. So. Uh, uh, some regional data that I don't necessarily need to display. Click OK. I'm just going to choose to filter it out so it's excluded. Oops. So now I can see at a glance which regions in Africa have the highest and lowest number of cell phone subscriptions by population. Now, Coropleth maps, or field maps like this one, are handy for showing a single variable, and they are mostly useful for giving the viewer a general idea. But as we know, hue and shading are relatively imprecise visual cues, so they don't tell us much about the nuances in the data. It's difficult, for instance, to compare the shading between, say, South Africa and, uh, say, Botswana. There is a difference there, but the values are so close that you can't really discern a difference in uh, uh, in, in, in shading there. Another important thing to note about Coropleth maps is that they get more useful at higher levels of granularity. Here I can just see averages at the country level. It's possible, highly likely in fact, that within nations there exists wide discrepancies and swings between cell phone usage in say urban areas and more rural ones, but I can't see it on this map. All local differences are elided. So a Coropleth map by itself can only show us so much. Let's talk a little bit about colors. Okay, I'm going to open my uh, edit colors. So the color gradient I'm using for this map is continuous, not stepped. See how it follows a uh, continuous gradient from 14.2 uh, to 165.6. And I can actually edit where I want it to start and where I want it to end and where the center's at. I generally prefer to use a stepped color scheme. Uh, because subtle gradations and shading are difficult for people to pick up on. Let's say, uh, uh, note, look at South Africa for instance. It's difficult to say that South Africa has more or less cell phone subscriptions than Libya. They both look so close and uh, they both have similar numbers but South Africa is a little more. But I couldn't tell that just from looking at the, at the data here. Uh, so if I wanted to do a, a stepped color scheme, I would select stepped here and it would break it up into several um, uh, different bins. I like seven. Uh, seven is good. So 
you have to be careful with step color schemes because too few steps and you make too few distinctions in the data and countries can get lumped together in a way that elides and erases differences and can actually be kind of misleading. But too many steps and you might as well just be using a continuous gradient. Here I'll choose seven steps, which is a good balance. Now let's talk a little bit more about color schemes and color gradients for choropleth maps. There are three basic color schemes supported by Tableau sequential, diverging, and qualitative. Sequential and diverging color schemes are best adapted for displaying quantitative information, while a qualitative color scheme is for when you need to show categorical data. This color scheme is sequential, that is moving from light to dark, with darker colors representing the higher values, although I could reverse that if I wanted to. I would just go to edit colors, and I would hit reverse, and see now the lower values are darker than the higher ones although your uh, viewer will, accept the, will expect the higher values to be uh, represented with the darker colors. Uh, so don't reverse it unless you have a good reason. In any case, this is the default setting in Tableau and good for visualizing unipolar data. That is data where you want to emphasize the highest values in the data set. If I wanted to emphasize both the highest and the lowest values, I would use a diverging color scheme, say orange to blue. These, this type of data set would be known as a uh, bipolar data set. And it's especially, uh, uh, and diverging color schemes are especially suited for representing data sets where there are both positive and negative integers. Here, I would just choose uh, orange and blue is one that I like particularly. Um, red and green is a popular one, but it can be difficult for people with uh, color blindness uh, to see. So here we have the darkest colors. Uh, we see the lowest values standing out. So South Sudan and Central African Republic, uh, those countries immediately stand out as having lower cell phone usage, whereas uh, Libya and South Africa and uh, Botswana uh, and uh, Gabon uh, stand out as having higher usage. And, and, and the uh, medium values are, um, they take the lighter, more muted tones. So a bipolar uh, data where you want to uh, highlight the contrasts um, is adapted for showing with a divergent color schemes. Now let's say I didn't want to display a quantitative variable here, but just wanted to sort the countries by region. I would drag my regional variable to color, and bam, uh, there we go. Uh, this is a qualitative color scheme. Tableau recognizes uh, region as string data, and it automatically assigns it to a qualitative color scheme. Now I can edit uh, the colors here. Again, uh, there's all these different color schemes in Tableau. Uh, let's say I didn't like the way my green appeared. I could choose a darker green. And uh, West Africa is uh, now displayed with a darker green. So you can adjust colors uh, as you like, uh, but this is a qualitative uh, color scheme. Um, and it just uh, doesn't really suggest any definite sequence or pattern to the data. It just simply assigns colors to different areas for easy sorting. A qualitative color scheme is best employed for sorting areas into a few buckets by a single categorical variable, not for making fine distinctions. Keep in mind that a viewer can only easily remember a few colors at any given time. So when employing a qualitative color scheme, it's best to keep things very simple and stick to a handful of colors, a half dozen or so. Much more than that and you'll start confusing people. But let's go back to this. Okay, I like that better. Colors, stepped color scheme, seven, there we go. Okay, so as we've seen, a choropleth map is fairly limited in what it can show. Uh, if we want to display more variables on a map, we'll have to get creative. Here, we'll use Tableau's dual axis option to project a symbol map over a choropleth map. So let's say I wanted to show urban and rural population percentages using a pie chart for each country. First, I would drag another latitude value into the rows column. And it's going to create a second map underneath. I'm going to select that map, and I'm going to remove uh, cell phone data here. For my second map, I'm also going to select pie. There we go. And drag this automatically generated variable measure names. Where's measure names? To the filters and choose what values I want to display on my pie chart. So here I want to do rural population and urban population. 
so I can get a kind of sense of where people are living in Africa and see if there's a um, relationship between cell phone usage and what population lives in, what percentage of the population lives in cities. So I'm going to select there that. Next, I'll so select measure names and drag it into color here. And I'll select measure values and drag it into angle. And now I have little pie charts. There you can see they're very small. So let's see if we can uh, do total population as the size variable. Blow it up a little bit. And there we go. We have pie charts. Uh, for every country in Africa showing what percentage lives in to towns and what percentage lives in uh, uh, cities. Again, I can just adjust these colors as I want. I can also add a border to make it pop, pop a little bit more. Maybe a halo. Let's do something bright green. That's a little gaudy. Maybe no uh, halo is better. Uh, and now, if I wanted to display this uh, pie chart map over the uh, Corifleth map, I would right-click Latitude here. And I would click Dual Axis. And there we go. We have one map uh, with uh, the pie charts showing, for, showing uh, uh, where the population in each African nation lives, and also size indicating how many people live in that particular country. Uh, so we've managed to get a few more variables into this uh, visualization. So in the above figure, uh, the urban and rural populations of each African nation are represented with a pie chart sized according to population. Not only are these pie charts difficult to read, but they can get kind of crowded. Notice, say, Rwanda and Burundi here are mashed together. And if I make things even larger, there's occlusion problems that result. Uh, and all this data is displayed at the national level. So if we had more granular data, if we could break it down on, say, the level of the province, uh, the symbol map would, which is already a little bit crowded, would get entirely illegible. Uh, there'd be all kinds of occlusion problems. Uh, uh, the uh, pie charts would be mushed on top of each other and they'd be very difficult to read. Uh, part of this is also due to problems inherent in using maps for data visualizations in the first place. Maps invite geographical comparisons, not quantitative ones, and it can be nearly impossible when faced with a map like this to give a precise account of the data. It can be hard, well, uh, we see that Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa, but say judging between Congo and South Africa is, 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 is tricky. We can't tell just by looking at the size of the circles. Uh, pie charts, we can uh, break things down by proportion using angle uh, uh, pretty quickly, uh, but again the small ones are fairly hard to read, uh, Equatorial Guinea especially. Uh, uh, so this isn't the most user-friendly way to display your data, uh, but sometimes it's the only way you have. Uh, I guess the lesson here is that a symbol map which attempts to display more than a couple of quantitative variables is already stretching the limits of what it can realistically accomplish. Uh, in the next video, we'll make a density map, which avoids some of the problems of a traditional symbol map. And uh, we'll uh, show how to uh, import uh, files, uh, uh, geospatial files, into Tableau uh, for uh, custom maps. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video.